Okay. Uh, let's wait for a few people to get in here. We are now live. Um, I've been kind of teasing you guys for a while about a big announcement, and I'm finally going to make it here. I wanted to do a live video. So uh, my wife and I have just completed writing a book, and we wrote a book about moving to Montana, moving to Whitefish, Montana. And here it is. It is a real thing. Um, wanted to do a video, talk about it, um, tell you a little bit about, you know, how, how it came about. I, uh, I've been getting a lot of calls from these videos uh, from people that want to move to Montana. And I got a call from a guy in Philadelphia who he actually is a publisher and um, he does books or helps people write books for uh, small businesses to help them with their business or, you know, put out their message, whatever they want to do. And so we got to chatting and, and he actually went to Penn State the same time I was there. We, a hundred years ago, we didn't really know each other at the time, but um, that's the beauty of the internet and, and all this social media is you get to meet people that you never would have met before. So like I said, we got to talking and um, I decided to write this book. I had, you know, I've been writing articles on our blog for a long time. And so I used some of those and repurposed them for Whitefish. But um, it's about 125 pages. It's a small little book. Uh, some of the chapters in here we did, you know, we talk about living in Whitefish. Uh, we talk about some of the neighborhoods in Whitefish, the health care. Uh, if you're going to move here, what the health care is like. Uh, we break down all the schools. There are uh, public schools and private schools here in Whitefish. Um, we talk about the recreation here. We have obviously Big Mountain. Uh, Glacier Park is right down the road. We have all the lakes and rivers that, you know, it, we've talked about this and shown you this on other videos. So if you want to go back and check those out, you can. Um, we talk about the restaurants, the bars, everything downtown. My wife right out, wrote all the part about shopping. Uh, she's more of an expert on that than me. Um, we also, I, I had, you know, these are kind of generic. And even if you're not moving to Whitefish, if you're just moving to Montana, we did do a chapter on uh, just buying a house, buying land and, and building a house. So Again, I've done, I just did a video on building a house the other day, so you guys can watch that. But um, in the book, I kind of go a little more in depth on things you need to know. Uh, if you're building a house, things you need to know if you're buying land, whether we're talking about the uh, covenants that you need to look out for, um, you know, the power, all of that that, that we talked about. Um, and then the last chapter we did about... Um, rentals and finding rentals here in Whitefish. So we tried to cover everything. We also in the appendix, in the appendix part, I have all the numbers for all the restaurants in town. Um, we have the, all of the utilities, the phone numbers for that. So it's a handy book if you do live here or if you're moving here, it's a handy book to have. Um, when we moved here, there was never there was, there was no such thing as a book about moving to Whitefish. So that was another reason I wanted to write it. Um, so yeah, you can go on Amazon and uh, get it. It's uh, called Moving to Whitefish, Montana. You can just type that in and it will come up. Um, or you can type in my name, Will Friedner, it will come up. So yeah, we're pretty excited about it. And like I said, wanted to do a, a live video and talk about it. So if you guys have any questions... Uh, I see a hello from Vegas. Uh, I bet it's a little warmer down there right now than it is here. Um, it is a nice day today here, if you're wondering. It's about 50 degrees and sunny, so uh, it could be warmer, but it is nice. So, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about the book or about any of the videos we've done, um, put them up on the screen here, and I'd be happy to answer. Ryan says hello from Orlando. Uh, again, <laughs> much warmer down there, I'm sure, than it is here. 
Uh, so, yeah, uh, and also if you guys have any ideas while I'm on here about uh, future videos and things you want to know or you want me to film or show you, uh, now's, the, now's the time. Uh, put up anything anything you want. Uh, Ryan asks, how fast is the population growing in whitefish? Well, over the past year, it's been, I don't have an exact number, but um, <laughs> looking at our inventory right now, it is very low. So we are getting quite a, a boom ever since COVID happened about a year ago. Uh, we, it's been crazy, um, not only here in Whitefish, but all over Montana. Um, the the inventory is low all over the state, except maybe the eastern part of the state. Uh, and with that, our prices have gone up quite a bit. Um, so yeah, uh, it's if you are going to buy right now in this market, you need to be ready to go. You need to have your financing set, um, and you need to be ready to jump on it. What I've been doing for a lot of people uh, that aren't in town is I've been running out to houses and I'll do a, a FaceTime walkthrough with them. Um, or if they have a, a Android or, or whatever, I did one last weekend where the internet was pretty bad up there, so I couldn't do it. So I just did a video. So I am happy to do that um, for people or for you if you want. If you see a house that comes on the market and you're out of town because Unfortunately, in this market, if you don't jump on it immediately, it's usually gone in a couple days. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's my biggest tip if you if you are looking to buy right now. And so, yes, the, the population is growing. They're building some new apartment complexes here in Whitefish right now. Um, one of them's just finishing up pretty close to where we live. Um, another one is... Uh, looks like it'll be done this summer. So they're trying to catch up, but uh, with the with the growth we're having and the demand we're having, it's uh, they're having a hard time keeping up with housing. Uh, Wendy says, deliveries to remote areas, Amazon Prime, does it take longer? Um, I maybe I don't I know that they're pretty good about getting out. I I I play hockey with the guy that uh is a UPS driver and, and he, I, he goes way out or, you know, he, he used to, I guess the, the routes depend on uh, your experience and how long you've been with the company, you get the better routes. So he doesn't have to go way, way out anymore, but sounds like they, they head way out, like up towards the yak, which is pretty remote um, every day. So uh, I don't think it's delayed too much. Um, you may not get it the next day, like you would in bigger cities, but, we're not that far out of civilization. We do get deliveries. So uh, Karen says hello from Salt Lake City. Hello. Um, snowing down there. That's not good. We had a little snow the other day here, but uh, again, today is sunny and nice. So if anybody else has any questions, let me know. Um, but yeah, back to the book. Uh, we'd appreciate uh, if you guys would purchase it or, uh, if you know anybody moving up here, tell them about it. That would be, that would be great. Ryan, thank you. How about land 40 acres? How often do tracks become available? Uh, there is some land available. Um, if you want, if, uh, I'm not sure what Ryan you are. I'm working with a Ryan right now. If you're the same one, uh, let me know. Um, if not, you can email me at montanaliferealty at gmail.com and uh, I can send you all the 40 acre lots that are available um, if you'd like to see them. They, the bigger lots are a little slower to come on the market, obviously, um, but I did look up, um, there was a, a another deal we're working, working on right now that had a large piece of land and they needed comps and I looked up uh, sales that were in Northwest Montana over the past year, and there were, I think there were 28 sales uh, of 100 acres or more. So that was more than I thought um, there would be with with uh, bigger pieces of land like that. So 
Bill, hello from New York City. Um, so yeah, that uh, any of you out there, if you want uh, information on any properties that are available here or in the area or anywhere in Montana, let me know. Uh, email me and I'd be happy to send out a link to our MLS. Um, that's what I do for most people because our the Zillows of the world and the Realtor.coms, they don't update as quickly. Our MLS updates in real time. So if you're looking for a specific piece of property and you want to be alerted, um, where again, like I said, in this market, you need to get on it immediately. Um, so you can't, <laughs> the delay with Zillow and the other places could cost you a house. So I've been setting people up on our MLS site and you can set up alerts so you're emailed immediately um, when a house of your whatever criteria you put in there comes on the market, you'll get an email the second it comes on MLS. So it's kind of a good way to keep an eye on properties um, if you are interested. So like I said, if you want to get on that that site and have, a, have an alert set up for what you're looking for, let me know. I can hook you up. And uh, so, yeah, uh, is there any other questions that anybody has? If not, I will sign off. But again, um, just wanted to talk about our book. We're pretty excited about it. Would love it if you guys would uh, get one. And uh, if you have any questions, I one of the other things I wanted to talk about is I've been wanting to do live videos for a while. I thought I would save it for a big occasion, and that's... <laughs> this counts. I don't write books every day. So, um, but I was thinking about doing one of these every week. Um, I will put uh, the, the link, I will put it at the bottom of the video when this is over. Um, someone just asked where the link was and uh, I'll put the link down in, in the, in the notes. Um, but if you're listening right now, you can just go to Amazon, type in moving to Whitefish, Montana, and it will come up. Um, so, okay. We have some more questions. My phone number, someone's asking, uh, is also on all our videos. It's 406-249-1735. And it's also in the notes of all the videos too. Um, Jamer, is it best to live near Helena? Well, <laughs> Helena is a great town. I don't know if it's best. I, I'm not sure what your definition of best is. Um, but Helena is a nice town. It's a little cheaper than uh, up here in the Flathead Valley just because we have the ski resorts and the resorts. Um, so, yeah, Helena Helena is a great place. There's some beautiful areas around Helena. I did do a video if you want to look back in uh, back on my channel. You can find it. I did it uh, a couple months ago. Um, it's just called Helena, Montana. So I kind of drove around the town, showed some nice spots, showed the downtown area, obviously the capitals there. So, um, yeah. Um, yes, please do one for Kalispell. Um, yeah, I'm going to start. I did when I first started doing videos last year. It's been exactly one year. I think April 23rd is the one year anniversary. So this channel is blown up. Um, I had you know, <clears throat> a few subscribers here and there. And then in September, when the one video I did went viral, I went from 600 subscribers up to 37,000, or now it's 38,000. So um, it's been quite the run for one year, and we're not even at a year yet until the end of the month. So uh, I guess what I'm what I was beginning to say is at the beginning of this last year, I did some neighborhood videos on Kalispell and Big Fork and I think I'm going to go back and you know do do some other videos about the town more about the town instead of just the neighborhoods uh, how do you determine what properties have covenants are they generally standard um, well I don't determine the covenants they're either um, if I send you the listing it'll say on there if there are covenants um, and if it's just bare land, it will also say on there if there are covenants. And if you have a property that you're interested in, um, 
let me know or email me the property and I can look up the covenants and I can send you a copy of the covenants if uh, you want a copy to, to go through and see what you can and can't do on the property. Flathead River runs near Whitefish. It's a huge cherry producing area. The cherries are amazing. Um, yeah, the Flathead River is kind of, it's, it's west or east of here. And then it runs south into Flathead Lake. And actually all the cherries are down along Flathead Lake. Um, we don't have, it, it's amazing the weather pattern here in this valley. Up here in the, Whitefish is on the north side of the valley, Whitefish and Columbia Falls. And if you're familiar, familiar with uh, nurseries and, and plants, you know, the zones of, that they give you of where plants will grow. Well, up in Columbia Falls and, and parts of Whitefish here, it's zone three. And then down along the lake, you can grow stuff almost in zone eight. So it's kind of amazing the difference in weather that Flathead Lake kind of creates its own weather and pattern. And it they get a lot less snow down here than we get in the north end of the valley. And it's all because of that lake. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, Lawrence Funding, what area cities do you sell? We, we are based up in the northwest corner of Montana. We live in Whitefish, so we cover all of Flathead Valley. Um, we've sold all the way down to Missoula and even in the Bitterroot Valley. Um, we work with agents all over the state. So if you're looking for an area like Billings or Helena or over in there, I can hook you up with an agent over there that we've done a lot of business with. Um, we have a team of people that we've gotten to know and uh, we can cover the whole state. Hector, thank you for your channel. You're welcome. Uh, Whitefish is Democrat and very affluent. Are they still requiring masks? Helps to be rich and left wing if you want to move there. You know, I've been debating doing a video on the politics, um, and I think I'm going to do it. I'm not. I'm not saying anything political here. Um, all I am going to say is that it's not the Democrats and Republicans in this area of Montana and in Montana are not like the ones you see on TV. Um, in my opinion, everybody's pretty, you know, like I always say, there's a, a little box um, and you're either on the left side of the box, the right side of the box, and then you've got the people way out on the, on the ends and they're the ones making the most noise on either side. Um, Everyone that I run into is pretty, you know, they lean a little bit one way or the other. There's not, I haven't seen a lot of the extremes here. So I'll leave it at that because I know that <laughs> you can't win with politics. You'll, you'll annoy somebody. Um, I lived in Montana all my life until I moved. Stevensville, Lolo, and Hamilton. Yeah, the, the Bitterroot Valley is beautiful. Um, if you guys haven't watched the show Yellowstone, uh, they actually film, that's where the ranch is, is down in the Bitterroot Valley and, you know, Hollywood magic, they, they make it look like that ranch is out in the middle of nowhere. And actually it's right along highway 93. Um, you can look it up on Google maps. It's the chief Joseph ranch. It shows up and it, it's right along the highways. And, you know, when you watch the show, you'd never know that kind of cracks me up every time, every time I watch that, it, uh, you, you think it's out in the, you know, miles and miles of nowhere, but there's a highway and then the town of Darby is just a mile up the road, if that. So it's kind of funny. They don't, <laughs> they don't show that on the, on the TV show. Ah, does Montana offer property tax benefits for veterans? Yes, it does. Uh, yes, Montana does. I don't, you need to talk to an accountant um, I know they do that because I've sold some properties where they list on the MLS, they'll list the tax amount that was paid the last year. And then they'll have a note in there saying that it will change because it was um, a veteran that owned the property. Uh, Moose Lake, Georgetown, Anaconda. <clears throat> I, I need to go down to um, Georgetown Lake and, in Anaconda and do a video. I've been to Anaconda to the golf course there, but that's about it. I've never been to Philip Phillipsburg. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's another pretty area down there. 
Uh, do you mind talking about Gallatin County, your opinion, experience, and any knowledge? Gallatin County, that would be Bozeman. And as you've seen in some of my videos, um, that is, let me check something here. Um, let's see. Gallatin. Yeah. Um, Gallatin. Oops, sorry. Gallatin, I'm just looking up on my Google Maps. I'm not sure. I knew Bozeman was in it, but I wasn't sure how far down it goes. It goes all the way down to the border of Idaho um, and includes West Yellowstone. So um, I've been to Bozeman quite a bit. Um, Bozeman is booming right now, um, kind of like everywhere else, but Bozeman is the most expensive part of Montana right now. It's the average price of a home in Bozeman. A single family home is over $700,000 now. And it's just, <laughs> it's just crazy. And I don't, obviously I have a biased opinion. I'm up here in, in Northwest Montana, but there's no water there. We have lakes and a bunch of lakes around here and streams and they have the one river that flows down into the park, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what the, what the big draw is in Bozeman. Uh, the ski resort in Big Sky is about, I don't know, 25, 30 miles south of Bozeman, and that road in the winter is brutal. Um, it, it's a, you don't want to be driving on that road if, it's, if, it, if the roads are bad. So yeah, I've always been uh, curious as to why Bozeman is, is such a big draw, but it certainly is because, uh, it, it's tough to find a place there right now. And the prices are just going through the roof. Um, yeah, Belgrade is also, yeah, Belgrade is kind of the overflow of the people that can't afford Bozeman anymore. And, and now Belgrade's prices are going through the roof as well. Um, just cause you can't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> every so many people are moving out there that they're, you know, they're pushing everybody out and the, you know, pretty soon three forks will probably take off as well, which is the next town further to the, to the West. So crazy times down in Bozeman. Montana is awesome. Needs to be left alone. People need their need to respect it and try not to change. That's exactly what I said in my video that went viral. Um, yeah, if everybody would just move here and enjoy it for what it is and not try and change it, that would that would be good. So spoke with you. Looking to expand from current location, open in its aesthetic medicine. Katie and wife, do you work in commercial? Yes, we do do commercial as well. Um, uh, so yeah, if you want to email, again, montanaliferealty at gmail.com. Um, I can hook you up with any of the commercial listings around here right now and uh, let you know what's available. How good is Helena when it comes to outdoor recreation, fishing, hunting, hiking? Helena's great. Um, again, in the video I did, I went up to this uh, park right on the side of town. There's a bunch of hiking trails that go up to Mount Helena, it's called. Um, you know, there's mountains all around Helena as well. There's a big reservoir uh, just north of town. Um, it's the old Lewis and Clark gates of the wilderness. Uh, part of their route was right through there. So Helena is great. Helena has, Helena has everything that you're looking for when you think about Montana. I am a developer out of Montana, I guess, looking for new ventures in Big Sky. Um, yeah, Big Sky. <laughs> Let me know again. Any of you guys listening or or, or that want uh, more information on any of these areas, just email me or give me a call, um, and I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, so yeah, um, I just you know would need to do some research on Big Sky. I don't have that right in front of me at the moment. Um, let's see. What can you tell us about Helmville? You know when I did. The video on Helena, 
I drove through there. It's on the way from here to Helena. You go right past Helmville, and I had never been there. And so I drove in. So watch that video. There's Helmville, and then there's um, – oh, God, my mind just went blank. Uh, let me look here on the map, the name of it. Um, another tiny little town like Helmville. Helmville is tiny, by the way. Um, there is not a lot in Helmville. And there's a lot of properties for sale right now that are off the grid in that area. So the thing about Helmville is if you're looking to get away from it all, you definitely will be doing that. Problem is if you need to go to a store or, um, you know, a decent sized store like a, a Home Depot or whatever, you're either going to Missoula, which is probably an hour and a half away, or you're going... Um, all the way up to our area, which is a couple hours away. So um, Helen is very remote, or I mean Helmville, sorry, um, is very remote. And I'm sorry, you can go over to Helena as well, which is probably 45 minutes from there. And some of those areas that I was talking about that I've seen for sale, the off-the-grid properties, they are way off the grid. So you have a probably a 25 minute drive into Helmville, which then from Helmville, you're, you're going a ways to get to a so-called real town. Um, so that is the deal with Helmville. I'm still, my map isn't working here. I'm trying to find the other town um, that I talked about on my video. Uh, anyway, I'm having problems right now. Um, but yeah, watch the video on Helena and you will you will see the other little town. Uh, let's see. Any info on Libby? Uh, Libby is an interesting town. It's very pretty up there. Um, Libby had the, the uh, vermiculite deal with the mine up there quite a few years ago. They did a huge federally funded uh, cleanup of all the all the asbestos in the town. So they had a huge problem. If you just Google Libby, you'll see the information on that kind of an interesting town, but it is a pretty area up there. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some nice places up around Libby and, and the, all the issues are, are, have been taken care of. So there's no, no need to fear living up there anymore. Um, the mine is shut down and they, they went through every property in town and, and cleaned up uh, any asbestos contamination. They were using it in some of the houses for uh, insulation. And so they totally remediated all of that, if I can spit that out. Um, and there is a, an office right in town that you can check on any address uh, and see what, what they did or if they had to do anything or what they found in that area. Let's see. I live in Northern California, about an hour and a half south of Oregon. It's the last somewhat normal area of California left. Yeah, Northern Northern California is totally different from Southern California, that's for sure. Sacramento and the Bay Area are destroying this area. They're all moving here. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's trying to get away. That's what I talked about in the one video that took off is uh, – I don't understand people, you know, they want to get away from the craziness and then they come up here and, you know, want to change it into where they just came from. And it makes more, makes no sense to me. So uh, let's see. Wolf Point is more of a small town than Helmville. Don't forget Great Falls. Uh, yeah, Great Falls is a, another nice town. It's on the front range. It's kind of windy over there. Um, you're out on the prairie a little bit. Uh, there is a big Air Force base, as you said, in, in Great Falls. So, um, yeah, uh, I have nothing bad to say about Great Falls. Wolf Point is way, way east of here. It's eastern Montana, so it it's pretty cold out there. Um, but there's some nice small towns out there if you're into the, you know, the prairie, the little house on the prairie life. Uh, you'll find it out in eastern Montana. I did a video on that as well. And I did go through Wolf Point, so you can see that on that video if you're curious. Let's see. Do people with lots of land tend, 
10 rent small sections for camping and hunting. Um, I haven't heard of that. I mean, yes, I, I have heard of people renting out part of their property for people to park RVs on it. Uh, as far as hunting, um, there's a, there's plenty of public lands around here that you can hunt. Um, a lot of the area owned by the lumber companies, they allow you to hunt in. So you just need to check um, and see what's available. Uh, but there is plenty of plenty of public land out here if you're into hunting and camping and parks. Um, obviously, the camping in the parks you can do or in the Forest Service land, there's plenty of that. So that looks like the the uh, about the end of the question. So thank you guys for watching. Again, wanted to tell everyone about our book. Uh, if you want to go to Amazon and pick up a copy, that would be great. And um, let me know uh, in the comments. Again, if I'm thinking about doing one of these weekly, if you guys would be interested, and uh, I'd be happy to come on and chat every week about Montana and what's going on. And uh, I will keep doing the videos every week. I, I was kind of bummed out. This was the first Tuesday that I did not um, uh, that I did not do a video on Tuesday. And there was just a whole bunch of things that led to that. I was wanting to do a live video instead of the uploaded video. And then all kinds of things came up yesterday afternoon and I could not do it. So I apologize for not being on Tuesday, but um, I will have a new video out next Tuesday. And if I start doing the live videos, uh, I was thinking about doing those on Sunday afternoons. So let me know if that's a good time for you guys. And um, yeah, thank you for everyone for tuning in and I will see you soon.